again. In the previous videos, we've talked a lot about how our friend Amy B. Amygdala works so hard to keep us safe and to make sure that we can keep breathing. Did you know that she also has the capacity to build new feeling states or to enhance the types of experiences that we have on a regular basis but want to enjoy more of, such as feeling confident and courageous, brave, or even calm and connected to the world around us? Our friend Amy B. Amygdala is involved in all of the feeling states. And when we partner with her and utilize neuroplasticity, we can strengthen the probability that she's going to go towards a positive or preferred emotional state rather than a more difficult one in moments of stress. It's much more preferable to be leaning into life than back on one foot, dukes up. And so let's learn an exercise that will support us in partnering with our amygdala so that we can guide her and teach her to go where we would prefer she goes in moments of difficulty. That is one of the most critical parts of resilience. CPR for the amygdala is our tool to help our amygdala calm down when she's already in a state of reactivity. Now we're going to be learning the creating possibilities protocol. We're creating new possibilities for our brain so that we can have more of what we want on a day-to-day -day basis. The first step of the Creating Possibilities Protocol is to find a positive anchor point. There's a lot of conversation these days around glimmers, finding small moments of gratitude or connection in our day-to-day -day lives. And this is a great representation of what I'm talking about. We call these in the field of neuroscience a resilience anchor. A resilience anchor is an experience from our past something that our brain has had in a relationship with, whether it be from our own life's journey or even witnessing a character in a movie or a book where our brain went, wow, that person is courageous. I would like to have some more of that, please. Anything our brain has had an experience with can become a resilience anchor. And those resilience anchors are representational neurobiological points that we're going to harness and partner with to build new neural pathways going forward. Once we've found our resilience anchor, then we're going to use something called mental rehearsal to build new neural pathways. Mental rehearsal is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to be utilizing our thoughts to mentally rehearse the experience that we want more of. And through that repetition, help our neurons fire and wire together, building new little freeways in our brain so that in a moment our brain wants to go in one direction, it can go, oh, I can feel anxious or ah, I can feel excited. And we're going to teach our brain to go to excited and to strengthen that with intention, which is pretty cool. That's the power of neuroplasticity. So mental rehearsal in the Creating Possibilities Protocol has a series of specific steps that we use. The first step is we're going to invite our brain to get really curious about the possibility of feeling the emotional state we identified in our resilience anchor. So if our anchor was about an experience of feeling courageous, perhaps we saw somebody do a courageous act and we said, wow, I would love to be courageous like that. And that's what we used as our anchor. We're now going to invite our brain to get very curious about what it would be like to have more of that feeling state. And as we're beginning the mental rehearsal part, we're going to bring in that havening touch so that we can partner with our brain in a unique and exciting way. The havening touch creates those electrochemical changes just like we've been talking about. So to start with the curiosity and getting our brain excited about the new possibility, we're going to ask ourselves, what if, in a really big, almost cartoonish voice, what if I were courageous? What if I were courageous? You can even change the inflection point on different statements. What if I were courageous? Helping your brain get very curious and excited about the opportunity of being courageous. Then you're going to shift to the next step and ask yourself, hmm, can I be courageous? Now, if your brain goes, I don't know if I can be, that's really, really important information. And I encourage you at that point to return back to the what if stage. What if? 
You see, we want to be partnering with our friend, Amy the Amygdala, helping her connect to a sense of authentic ownership with this idea. We don't want to force her into feeling a certain way because she's not going to believe us. Remember, she's four times faster than our thinking brain. So we want to partner with her and check in, you know, hey, what if? And if she goes, yeah, you know, that sounds good, then we can move on to the I can be. And if she goes, yeah, there's a possibility there I can be. Then I invite you to repeat the statement, I can be moving into deeper ownership and connection with it. I can be courageous or whatever your chosen belief is. I can be, I can be, I can be. Repeating that statement, helping the mind body system connect more fully to it. And even if you like returning to that resilience anchor and noticing it and going, ah, that I can be that and checking in on that data point. After you've repeated that statement at least five times, I can be, then we're going to move to the next step, which is examining, hey, will we be in the next five or so seconds? Now, this is a very important point. We're not looking at, will we feel this way in three weeks from now? It's, will I be in the next couple seconds? Is it a possibility for our brain and particularly our friend, Amy the amygdala, to feel safe in this new state. I will be. I will be courageous. I will be courageous. I will be courageous. And if that feels comfortable, once again, repeating that five times. If any part of your mind-body system goes, ah, no, then return to the I can be or the what if. We're always partnering with our brain and letting our friend Amy, the amygdala, know that we see her. Now, this is critical. If during this exercise, you notice that Amy starts getting a little upset, so you start noticing some stress or some anxiety or any part of your mind-body system saying, no, nah, this is not real, I'm, I don't like this, I don't trust it, then transition back to that CPR for the amygdala exercise. Let Amy know that you see her and that you're going to partner with her and proactively help her move into a state where she can be safe in the here and now. And then you can return back to this experience. Our brains go wherever we go. And our friend Amy the amygdala is one of the fastest brain parts we have. She'll always be looking out for data and letting us know if she has worries or concerns. If the I will be has linked into your mind body system and now feels real and possible at that point i invite you to shift into an assessment on a scale of zero to 100 percent where 100 percent is yes absolutely authentically true i am capable of feeling this right here right now and a zero is absolutely not at all check in on your body's felt sense ownership of that feeling state and if it's 95% or above, then transition into the I am ownership. I am courageous. If it's below a 95%, go back to those other inquiries. What if? I can be. I will be. Sometimes you may explore and your brain may say, you know what? I want to try on if I deserve to be and see how that feels. There's many different ways that we can support the system in building even deeper links to what we're wanting our system to have more of. We only go to the I am when it feels true and connected with our mind-body system, when our amygdala is on board. We don't want to lie to Amy. She will get upset with us. And if you've ever felt what it's like when your amygdala is upset with you, you know what I'm talking about. So I am, and when we're at 95% or above of truth and connection to that feeling state, and you might even want to then imagine you're owning that internally, bringing it in. What does it feel like in your mind-body system? Adjusting your posture to feel a sense of ownership and connection to it. Really allowing your mind to say, yes, this is a new neurobiological pathway that I have built. And I'm excited to stay in deep relationship with it. 
Once you've moved into that I am state again, five repetitions, say it five times, I am. Letting your mind body system know that you have seen it, you're partnering with it, continuing that soothing, havening touch. That's a critical part for helping the brain partner with neuroplasticity and really bringing that I am statement to the front and center of your awareness. Once that partnership is built, allow your mind to revisit that same resilience anchor, whatever it might have been, and check in on that zero to a hundred percent scale for several days after the first time you do this exercise. This is a very, very important part to create success. See our friend Amy the amygdala prioritizes the hard things. It's called a negativity bias. And when we are building new neural pathways, we want to be very intentional about set shifting and revisiting, prioritizing the feeling states we want more of. So check in zero to 100%. Where are you? And don't worry if you were at 100 and now you're at a 70. Guess what? Life happens. That happens. It's okay. Notice that 70. And if you have a little bit of time, check back in. Do I need to start with what if? I can be. I will be. Wherever it feels appropriate to start, revisit that mental rehearsal. Notice your resilience anchor and begin that havening touch and start strengthening and building again. This entire exercise took a little bit to explain, I know, and in practice, it's quite quick. It's a wonderful way to start to sculpt the brain you want to live with. We can actually build our future at a neurobiological level. So try it out. Let me know how it goes. And I look forward to hearing from you in the comments.